It's time for the cover price top 10. Let's take a look at this week's 10 hottest selling books up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hey there, panelologists. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with another video. Before we get started, please do all that great stuff, stuff like comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you enjoy content like this, we've been putting out for about a month now these cover price top 10 videos, and we have a lot of other types of videos we put out. Uh, also, follow us on the other socials at Instagram, Bronzeville underscore comics, whatnot, Bronzeville underscore comics. We do sales every Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern time. So give us a follow over there. And there is a link in the description of this video. If you have not yet tried whatnot, you can sign up using the link to the video. You'll get $10 off your first purchase. Also, in the description of this video, there is a link to my eBay store as well as my email. And it is late at night, so I'm more tired than I need to be. So anyway, let's get started. We're going to go over the cover price. Uh, Top 10 books in terms of volume of sales, some new, some old, some that are sticking on this list. Let's take a look. Let's dive in. Let's start at number 10. This book back on the list, Wolverine number 36, the first appearance of the Helverine combination of Wolverine and Ghost Rider. We're seeing now 9.8s coming to sale um, for about $100 uh, raw copies at about 26 um, and we're seeing second prints of this and other variants. Um, the obviously the George Perez Virgin one in a hundred because of its exclusivity is a very expensive. The second price by Tyler Kirkham, not Robert Kirkman. Tyler Kirkham is going for just about five bucks. Um, so it seems as though people want the A cover, the first print. Um Yeah, there is a second print one in 25 retailer incentive. Um, but uh, this book, again, let's see if we want Wolverine 36 in a 9.8. If we take a dip onto eBay. Uh, so a bundle for $185 of cover A and cover B. Um Cover A, actually, look at this auction. A day and 20 hours left, and it's already up to 112 That's interesting. Um, you know, $200 here, 130 um, It's with $15 shipping. Uh, there's the Perez uh, alternative cover, uh, new auction. So, yeah, um, we're seeing a few of them come to market in a 9.8. And... Um, I would be a little bit wary of, again, those very recent 9.8 supply and demand. The supply of 9.8s is very low. The demand currently sitting rather high. Let's look at number nine. And we have this once again. Omega Men number three, the first appearance of Lobo. Um, this book remaining pretty consistent. If we look at its place in the top 10, we're here. Um, there was... Uh, the a lot of people speculating around Jason Momoa portraying the character in the upcoming DCU, probably not going to be portraying Aquaman going forward after the film that's coming out next month. So th this book keeps on selling. Let's take a look on cover price um, or go collect, I should say, Omega Men 3. And this is one of the books we've noticed um, did have a little bit of a spike in the boom, not as big a spike as a lot of other books, specifically Marvel books. It's holding at about that $350 value in a 9.8, right? Went up to like $400 during the comic boom and then started to come down. And then the speculation hit at the end of last year and it jumped up, up above 400 and has been trending down over the last year almost and now is ticking up a, a, a little bit lately we see an auction went for 325 best offers accepted for a little bit lower than that an ebay fixed price um last week for 368 330 and auction for 366 so there's not a lot of differential between auctions and best offers there uh people want this book 
The demand is out there. Supply is okay. And supply of nine eights is not bad because this was a direct only issue printed on what they called Baxter paper, which was a um, thicker uh, paper quality. And it was also much whiter paper quality than most newsprint comic books of the early 80s. Let's go to, hold on. Okay. Let's go to number eight on the list, and it's Fantastic Four 244. The first appearance of Nova. Uh, Frankie Array had appeared in an earlier comic book. We'll talk about that as well. Uh, there's speculation that they're going to use a female Herald of Gal Galactus, and this is really the only one. Um, the uh, Again, all speculation at this point. Now, there should be a distinction, and this is kind of hard a distinction to make. You can't really introduce both characters the same names. So there's Nova, Richard Ryder, and the Nova Corps, who long been speculated, and that issue number one is quite popular. Um, and there's also um, this character entitled Nova, which came along a little bit later. Uh, and again, this book has been around for a while. Uh, if we look, it is currently going uh, high grade books in the 30 up to 50, $60 range, a 9.8 at about $400. And kind of worth getting graded down to the 9.2 uh, over $100. Let's see where this has been historically, because there are people that like this book. It's always been a key. But to be honest, there have been a lot of people that have speculate, been speculating on this character for the last several years, knowing that it were eventually going to get Galactus and Frankie Ray is one of the heralds. Let's look at the direct version. Um, fair market value, go collect it, 425. That's about in line. And we can see, look at this book, though, right? It... I mean, we're looking uh, in 19, 2018, 2019, it's around a $200 book. And then even before the pandemic, it's up to $325, right? And then all of a sudden we get into 2021 and boom, it's up to a $1,000 book. I mean, this book was selling around $1,000 for the first several months of 2002. And then it came crashing down about half price, down to about a $400 book which is where it's kind of sitting in the 300 range. And there have been a couple of upticks in the last week since the news. Um, you know, this is a book, Fantastic Four 1982 is plentifully printed. You can find a copy um, for a reasonable price, right? We're looking at Raw's, again, you'll probably get a Raw for 20 bucks. That's in decent condition. Probably not a 9.8 contender, but in decent condition. And if you look hard enough, you might be able to find a high-grade contender. Um, so that's what I would go for rather than, than jumping into the slab, especially at this point in time. This is speculation. Often the um, values at the speculation level are higher than the values at the realization level for a lot of these characters. Let's go to um, number uh, seven on the list. And that is beneath the trees where nobody sees. Absolutely no idea. This is not at all in my um, wheelhouse. It is an IDW book. Uh, this is a new book. Um, it gained immediate attention upon release with affordable copies quickly disappearing online. The consensus within the community is the book demands adaptation. Even without substantial content, the concept of anthropomorphic animals confronting a serial killer has captured the imagination. It's a unique blend of horror and classic animal storybooks of Richard Scarry. Uh, uh, attracting a dedicated following. Uh, to quote comic enthusiast Pat Oswalt, finally, murder and forensics are adorable. Um, 10 copies sold. Let's take a look at where it is selling. Uh, no slab copies because it is a very recent book. There were New York Comic Con exclusives. Um, the, the foil there, the storybook foil is going for 60 bucks. Um, the black and white for 40. So there are exclusives. Now, the regular book, again, all the sales are going to be high grade, 30 ish bucks. Nothing yet coming to market. Let's see uh, if we can see anything on eBay in terms of a 9.8. Beneath the trees, one. Uh, foil at pre sale. We're talking pre sales here. 75, not bad. Um, 
Is that the? No, that's the uh, not the nine. That's not not the foil. One thirty nine. The regular cover pre sale one hundred fifty bucks. That is probably to be expected. Um, again, you can get under thirty dollars a high grade raw copy. If that's something that interests you, you might be able to still see it on the shelves of your local comic book store. Let's go to number six. And we talked about this book to a degree. It's a multiple key. It's Fantastic Four 164. And it's the first appearance of uh, in the modern age of Marvel Boy, who was a Atlas Golden Age 50s character. And the first appearance of Frankie Ray, who later becomes Nova. Um, and we can see... This book, high, high, I mean, a near mint copy went for a dollar. High grade copies, you know, mid grade copies you can get for under 20 bucks. High grade copies a lot. So, I mean, look at this $1,000 for a CGC 9.8. Let's see where this book has been. It is, uh, what issue the number is this? Uh, 164. So, if we look at Fantastic Four, 164, right? It's going to, because there was, you know, always speculation around Nova and what have you, but like nine eights hasn't been, hasn't been a nine eight sold. Uh, there was a recent sale, best offer accepted of a thousand last was a thousand back in March of 2020. Like, uh, like almost like the day that coronavirus, you know, <laughs> like hit. Um, so hard to tell. Let's look at the more common, uh, let's look at the most common grade. I'm not sure which, uh, which grade is the most common for this book? Because we are talking about a Bronze Age book, so nine eights are difficult to come by. Not a lot sold, only 119 sales. The most sales are a nine, nine six, but again, nothing recent. Um, yeah, a three hundred dollar best offer accepted. That's probably what you're looking at. About. Approaching three hundred dollars in a nine point six. Let's see what's available on um, just to CGC one sixty four. Fantastic four. And not a book a lot of people are specking. I think I might ha I have one somewhere. I know that nine point zero for two hundred bucks. Eight point zero. Here's a nine point six for two eighty. That's a healthy ask. Uh, another 9.6 for 290, 9.4 for 200, 9.6 for 260, 9.4 for 200. Um, it's a 3.5. Uh, I don't ask me. A 6.0 even, 7.0, 5.0. I guess, and a lot of people dumping these out here. Nice six mark jewelers. That's a crazy price, $2,500. So there are a lot of people putting this probably out for sale just because they've heard of the speculation news, but we're not seeing nine eights. If you got a nine eight of this, I would have to think that's a thousand dollar book. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Let's go to number five. And an old favorite Marvel superheroes, secret wars, number eight, the origin of the black symbiote soup suit, right? Um, we'll go with just the, the standard cover. We're talking about nine eights and 500 plus range. Uh, high ish grade copies anywhere, like even mid grade, hundred plus dollar books. And for high grade, you're going to have to pay over 200 for a raw, most likely. Um, we, uh, I think that this has to do with the, um, the new video game that uh, highlights spawn. This is always going to be a key. Uh, this is, let's take a look at the go collect data. Um, where this book has been again, this is one of the more, um, available. I mean, let's take a, a comparison. The FF book here has 335 universal copies and we're talking a later book. Right, 1975 and post it was 84. So nine years later. We're going to look at the direct just because there's more sales data there. There's four tens and 22 nine nines. A 10 sold for 14 grand back in 2019 and a nine nine sold for 12 grand earlier this year. But let's look at the 5,426, about a quarter of nearly a quarter of all available books are nine eights. Uh, it is a book that you probably can't get for under $500. And look at this trend right here um i'm just gonna yeah we'll just hover right around the sold price here 
it jumped up uh, right around uh, the when COVID, uh, actually after COVID. This is a uh, a 2021 bump. It jumps basically from a three four hundred dollar book up to an eight hundred dollar book almost overnight. And it's kind of settled down a little bit where we're looking at actually an auction of only $475. Uh, best offers more in the 500. Look at 635 recently. Ooh, that is a that is a nice pickup. Um, I don't know if we would see this available uh, on eBay in a 9.8, right? Marvel Super Heroes. Again, but not a rare book. book that's out there 98 for 650 509 that's uh, free shipping that's actually not at all a bad it's like a gen 2 uh label um newsstand for 1750 uh 98 at auction it's at auction it's already four days left and it's at 565 dollars that's a newsstand i'm sorry um this one's at 226 four days and 21 hours left that's like a sunday evening i believe uh, newsstand for twenty nine hundred, CBS for four seventy five, uh, newsstand fifteen hundred, four days eight hours, uh, two fifty five, six eleven. So you're gonna have to pay up if you want a nine point eight of this book. I did have a nine point six that I did sell, uh, but it's it, this is always gonna be a key uh, over the long term. I see this increasing in value because there is a great demand for this book in the hobby. And since it is a book from 1984, there are a lot of collectors who'd like to see it in a 9.8. Let's go to number four on the list. <laughs> what else? Dazzler number one, Taylor Swift. You know the story, right? I was watching the World Series game and there was a couple they caught on camera dressed as, um, what's his name? The, the Chiefs guy, the, her boyfriend from the Chiefs and, and uh, Taylor Swift. It's late. I'm, my brain isn't working at 100%. Um, especially when we're zooming out of comic realm. Now we're looking at near mint copies pushing up to 39, eight at 250 to 277. The most recent sale. Um, I don't think we're going to see any news other than, well, maybe there was a picture of Taylor with the, the director, uh, some hints, nothing confirmed about Taylor Swift. Um, and interestingly, this is I, just because they're probably more available that this is selling at higher quantities than X-Men 130. That's the book you really want because that is a key key. Um, I think this is, is going to have a little more volatility to its price, even at a 9.8. There are only 351 9.8s out of 1,500 graded. Um, and auctions. Again, this is where it's trending up. The auctions are going for more than the fixed price over the last couple of weeks, right? A fixed price at 210, an auction at 252. A fixed price at 250, an auction at 277. Um, if we look at the trend, the book is holding and it's going up and down and keeping its value. Um, yeah, somebody's asking 350 on eBay, uh, nine sixes. We can save. We could probably, you can probably get that for under 100 in the right circumstances. Let's move to number three on the list. Spawn one. We see it again. There's anticipation of a Spawn movie that has been hinted that it's coming, but um, there hasn't been, there's been a lot of, um, I guess, heel dragging on Todd McFarlane's part. Maybe he wants the movie to be perfect. Um, Spawn is not completely in the general pop culture consciousness the way Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and a lot of the Marvel characters are, or even characters from The Walking Dead. There was the movie um, in, what was it, 98, I believe, was not well-received, uh, did not do well. Uh, so Jamie Foxx is connected to the project. We will see what's happening, what's causing this spike. Um, the CEO, Jason Blum of Blumhouse, Recently reaffirmed its release in 2025. Edgy, creating anticipation among friends, incentive to push a movie forward may increase due to the six of five nights at Freddy's, which already grossed over 130 million globally. I did watch that. My my um my older daughter really wanted to watch it. Um, let's see where Spawn is sitting in the 9-8. There are a there are plenty of copies of Spawn One, and there are plenty of nine eights. Uh, we're just looking at regular direct 24,000 copies, 11,000 nine eights. 
Um, there's just, it was a heavily printed book. It's sitting under $200 and actually dipping down a little bit. This book was over 200 um, in fair market value earlier in the year, not that long ago. And obviously, you know, it's kind of been on the downtrend ever since it hit like this height. And I want sold price. But it never really went into the stratus. We were much above 250. And now it's a, a book that you can get probably for under $200. You know, somebody asking 200 on eBay. Um, and there are plenty of raw copies out there. If that's more your thing. Uh, let's go to number two on the list. And it is Universal Monsters Dracula Issue 1. You got Dracula. It's written by James Tinney in the uh, fourth. So he, all of his projects are gaining a lot of interest. Um, there is a one per store lunar retailer. Thank you. Um, and there's been anticipation of Tinian working on Dracula. Um, the, so this is a, an incentive, a thank you. Um, it's going for no nine eights. None of them graded 30 to 40 bucks. If you get it for if you can get it for cover price, go for it. If you can get it like twenty or less, it might be worth it. A really a really nice cover. Um, we will see how uh, if Image is going to pursue this line of Universal monsters, and you know they're trying to build a movie cinematic universe. Did not work out. Let's go to number one on the list. Brand new book, uh, Amazing Spider Man, number. Uh, 36, the Arthur Adams 1 in 25 variant, uh, cover Black Cat, right? So the Black Cat cover, again, no 9.8 sales and about a $40 book. Um, it's a 1 in 25. Let's see if anything, Amazing Spider-Man 36, 1 in 25. Amazing Spider-Man 36, 36, 1 colon 25. It's an Art Adams cover. I don't see anything, yeah, uh, pre-ordered. I was thinking about this on FOC, but my my hesitation was that unlike, let's say, Young Allies with um, it's Firestar, correct? A lot of these Art Adam, Adams good girl art covers are on lesser ordered titles. Amazing Spider-Man is, I have to imagine, the most heavily ordered title that Marvel puts out month to month. Um, and the, the introduces the repossessor. Nobody cares about that. The Arthur Adams Good Girl Black Cat variant cover um, is really what is driving this book. So we got some old, we got some new. Um, you know, we're at uh, like six to four old versus new. All right. Spawn Dazzler Secret Wars, the two Frankie Rays, and the Omega Men are all old. The other four books are new. So that's a, a, a nice mixture. I would tend to stick with the older books that have a proven track record because even Dazzler, Spawn, the Black Suit, Nova, um, and Lobo are all key first appearances that comma collectors want. Um, and that kind of is able to give it some stability above just what character might appear briefly, um, kind of out of character in a movie or TV show by Marvel. That is it for the video. A nice quick one on the cover price top 10. Um, my recommendation is twofold. I wouldn't go crazy for any of these books. Um, I think the Helverine is interesting. I'd look for that at kind of, um, if you can get it below like FMV, um, go for it. I wouldn't be like waiting um, outside, uh, you know, the post office for 9.8s to come in. You have the, you know, you will have nine eights and as the supply of nine eights increases and the demand more or less stays the same, the price is going to drop. That's just the way that it works. Um, and so just be wary of those brand new covers. If you could pick them up again for cover price at your LCS, go for it. The other books are established keys. Um, and they are, we can see they're holding their value for the most part, even, um, through the comic boom and the economic, uh, downturn and inflation, people kind of moving away a little bit from collectibles. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to thank everyone for stopping by. Um, 
you know, just uh, leave a comment. What do you think about these books? And do you have any of them? Are you searching for any of them? In the meantime, you can take a look at a couple of my other videos here. And this is Jim saying until next.